the Nottingham Building Society, along with our partners, providing you with all your financial needs, including savings, the lifetime ISA, mortgages, and home insurance. Visit thenottingham.com to find out more about how we can help. Have you got crowds in then, or is it are you playing behind closed doors? Uh, 375. We can be 500 assembled. So, like, if you take away all the staff and all that, it's 375 spectators. I'm guessing the drummers are in there. The drummers are there, yeah. First couple of games, they weren't allowed, but then eventually now they have them there. So, I think the little fan section is about 20, 20 people, probably, all sitting down. But the drums are there. <laughs> They're some of the best drummers I've ever seen. And I said, they're so in rhythm and in sync for the, oh, yeah. whole, for the whole time. That's what got me. They don't stop. <laughs> no, they're, uh, they're really good. And like, that's what we're known for. Um, so we're, we're pretty proud uh, that we could manage to get them back. And it definitely makes a difference in the games, too, um, now that we have them. Well, see, I'm going to get into it a little, bit, a little bit later with the Continental Cup and stuff. But like, that atmosphere in that, in that building... They, that, that, it just harbours a, a great atmosphere in there. It's, to be a part of that, it doesn't translate on the video footage, but to be there and experience it and hear it, right. it's just different. Yeah, yeah. And, and hey, it, it comes right back to, to the away fans too. Like they're still singing, uh, singing the song, like or take, Don't Take Me Home or yeah. what was it called? Don't they're take still me. singing that. They're, they're still singing it. They, uh, so they got they got a new one in their category in, in their catalogs. So uh, that's thanks to the the Nottingham fans for sure. <laughs> Had you ever seen the conga line around the rink before? When they yeah, they, they do that sometimes. You know, it depends on what team. Like in a Continental Cup, everybody's friendly, but some teams you can't do that with. <laughs> I heard about the team from down the road that you're big rivals. Some of the rink staff were telling me that when you go there, you have the the fans have to wear like not. So under Yuska colours, they have to wear like bland colours because it's a bit, um, it's a, like Sheffield Nottingham, just more extreme. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely in the old days. In the old <laughs> days, it was, uh, is a, it was like we know it from, from the football. Mm. Uh, now it's a bit more relaxed and uh, they know each other. Um, but, but yeah, in the old days, it, was, um, it could get a little crazy. But it was an old guy I was talking to, so that's probably what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. They, they still remember the good old times. <laughs> Now, speaking of good old times, should we talk about Nottingham? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right, so you signed for Nottingham on the 5th of October 2017. You just finished a pretty good year in Germany. How come you were still available at that point? Yeah, <laughs> you're asking the wrong person for that. <laughs> I know it's, um, well, it's, it's hard to explain because uh, the market is, uh, is different every year. Um, just look at it this year, you know, it's uh, and it was just a tough market to be a goaltender in uh, that summer. Um, there weren't a lot of open jobs and um, I wanted to stay in Germany. But the thing about Germany is that they have a, a lot of good German goalies as well. And because of their the cap for um, imports, you know, I was uh, I wasn't uh, on top of anybody's list, unfortunately. <laughs> so once uh, those uh, jobs didn't really uh, go my way, you know, like you, you just um, kind of follow the market and eventually you got to make a decision. Okay. Are you, are you going to settle uh, for less or are you going to wait it out? And I decided to, to, to wait out instead of um, put myself in a position where I wouldn't play so much um, um, either in Germany or in, in Austria at the time. So I decided to wait it out and then, well, yeah, eventually Nottingham came around and there was another team from the Austrian league that came in at the same time. But uh, eventually, I think um, Nottingham felt right uh, compared to the other team. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to this day that I took that decision. And then, was it Corey who reached out to you or, or, did, like, or did your agent say, oh, there's a chance you could go to Nottingham? Which way round was that? It was, uh, it was the first three agents. And, um, but I, I genuinely, like, uh, generally like to, you know, be involved, uh, on a personal level. Like I want to hear from the coach or the GM, what he's saying, not through my agent when we're talking, uh, when we're talking ice hockey, hmm. like the business stuff, the numbers and all that, they can take care of that. But once it, it comes down to the, 
the actual uh, what's in the room, what's on the ice. Uh, I kind of want to hear it firsthand. And uh, Corey reached out. I think we talked twice before um, it came to came to be complete. Um, and you know, like like I said before, it, it it felt like the right thing to do. And um, yeah, like I said, haven't regretted it. Now, everyone who I talk to always tells me how Corey is. There is only one Corey Nielsen. There is no one like him anywhere else. What do you remember about your first – because he's very dry for a North American. His sense of humor is very British because he's, he's been around here for so long. What was your first interactions with him like? Yeah, well, I think you, you already explained it there. It's, um, you know, like it's hard to just say it uh, just like you did without making him look bad. <laughs> but, but yeah, he's just, he's just uh, a dry – dry sense of humor um, where you kind of like have to um, read through the lines, so to say. Like my first day in Nottingham, I, I was on the ice alone with Corey because uh, there was a game that night and I wasn't ready to play uh, against Sheffield. But in the morning, I was on the ice uh, with the guys and then afterwards, Corey and Corey, yeah, he wanted to light me up. So so he did, he did his best, and every time he, he scored, yeah, he scored a couple, but, you know, he, he let me know. And to be honest, I, I didn't know how to respond. Should I uh, give him something back or should I just eat it? Um, so what I learned over time, I should have just uh, given him some, some shit right back into his face. But that first day, I was, uh, I was a little altar boy. I didn't say too much. I don't think so. <laughs> You were coming into a team where obviously Michael Garnett was already there as, as the netminder. Were you coming in to, to share starts or did Corey make it clear that this is a, a battle? Like, Because you're all alpha males in the room at the end of the day. You all want to play. Were you coming in to fight for a number one spot or was it a case of sharing it sort of thing when you first got there? Well, yeah, it was, uh, I was told that it was um, the job is there to take. Um, not He didn't take anything away from Garnett and his, uh, but... But the way the, the EIHL schedule is, it's Saturday, Sunday. And if you can have a one-two punch, it doesn't matter who's one and who's two. But if you have two, it's, that's, a, that's a recipe for a championship. Like, mind you, it didn't work out at the end, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, that's the kind of – that's what I was sold on, you know. Like, I would still play once a week. Hmm. Um, and that's – it kind of – like, some weeks it wouldn't go that way. And some weeks I'd play two. But, you know, i play once a week. Uh, pretty much guaranteed if I, you know, hold my hold my end of the bargain too, and that's uh, that was one of the the things that that, that dragged me in that direction, and yeah, it uh, it kind of showed that that it was a big strength in our team that we could do that. Um, but again, unfortunately, yeah, it didn't it didn't <laughs> give us any trophies at the end. But you know, you you, you can't always uh, your master plans can't always uh, come come to a successful end at the end because there's other teams who, who do good things as well. And of course, you also had Sam Gospel there as well. And he's such an important part of that net mining group as well, wasn't he? Absolutely. Sorry, I, I, should, I should never have forgotten about that because, you know, like the, the work he put in every single day, you know, and the times where, where we couldn't dress two import goalies, where Sam had to be there, you know, like I'm confident if he had to go in the net, we could still get the get the win. And I remember being on the bench when he played uh, against Manchester, I think it was a cup game, you know, and he stood on his head. Um, so he's absolutely a big part of that, uh, the, that goalie unit we had that year. And did you know anything about the Elite League coming in? Or was it like all brand new to you, brand new information? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't very much, uh, to be honest. You know, like of course, in the in the industry or what do you call it here, it's you. Of course, you know some things, and yeah, it's uh, it was a tough league once upon a time. And but it, it's pretty easy if you if you're in hockey and you know hockey, you just have to look at a couple of rosters, and then you can see okay, there's there's good hockey here. Um, you can watch a few highlights, and then obviously I, I had the the championship, uh, champion uh, Champions League, sorry, highlights to go for, and yeah, like obviously it was a good team. I was uh, I was going to enter the room with there, so it was it was more like you said, yeah, like I learned uh, as I as I went along, and um, yeah, it gave me some some good experiences, that's for sure. And you got to learn pretty quickly because, like you said, your first game, you got to watch a Panthers Steelers game. And that's, it's different to everything else, but that, that's, a, that, that's a proper eye-opener when you see that full barn and how the teams go at each other. 
Oh yeah, I remember. I, I just it's not that long ago that it's uh, that it was a uh, what the two year anniversary, three year anniversary. So some memories popped up on my phone, and I remember I filmed from uh, from high up in the press box, and uh, I sent it to some of my buddies I played with. Yeah, it's, this is no joke, that's for sure. And a uh, great atmosphere. Got to experience it a couple of times myself uh, on the ice. It's um, the the crowd definitely. Um, the crowd aspect of the IHL don't get the credit out in Europe as, as they should, you know, like our league here in Denmark, you know, we, we have some, some games that are only 500 people on a, on a good day for, for some teams in Copenhagen, you know, and not a lot of EIHL teams uh, have uh, those small crowds, it's big crowds and, and people, people love it and they, they get into it. So that aspect of the EIHL, it was definitely, a positive um, eye opener once I got there. Now, what, one of the things that always seems to surprise people is, and it might be because like of how football works over here, is that how the fans travel with the team. How many like on a Wednesday night in Dundee, you'll still have yeah, yeah. Panthers fans up there with you? Yeah, that was uh, that was really amazing. Uh, I come from a very small country where it's easy to go uh, watch uh, away games. So to see uh, Panthers jerseys uh, that far away from Nottingham, that was. Uh, that was really cool, and like I said, that away fans always contribute a bit to to the atmosphere of home. Run. So uh, that was really cool. And then your whirlwind introduction to Nottingham sees you go to uh, you play you make your debut in the Champions Hockey League in TP. Right. You don't yes. even get a shirt that's got your name on it. <laughs> how were you, how were you, were you just happy to just get out there and get a game under your belt after signing, getting to Nottingham, watching the game? And don't, I imagine just getting to play in anything was a relief. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. You're right on it. I was just happy uh, that I got to start in the, in the Champions League. You know, like, of course, uh, at that time, we'd already moved on. So essentially, the, the points of the game didn't really matter. Uh, but every game always matters, you know. Like um, could have could have played uh, Sam Gospel, uh, given him some some valuable experience as well. But he decided to give me a give me a chance, and obviously T TPS uh, <laughs> it definitely gave me uh, some shots to work with that day. And, and and the guys in front of me still played great, even though like we had nothing to play for. Still played like hearts out, like like we were representing something out in Europe. So. That was, that, was, that was cool to be a part of, even for a game that, yeah, didn't really mean anything. That, 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 that team that you were a part of, that was a team that, that genuinely did never give up. I mean, guys like Matthew Gagnon, Jeff Brown, Eric Lindhog, and these, everyone on the Oli Betridge, these are all guys who just go 100% all the time. I imagine playing in front, behind Matthew Gagnon is quite a pleasure because there'll be no one in your, in your crease when he's on the ice. <laughs> Yeah, well, at that time I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first game I watched against the Steelers, there were three fights. So to, to pick out who was uh, the designated uh, heart and soul of the team was was hard to, at that point. But that 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 became clear uh, later on, that's for sure. And after TPS, you get to make your home debut against Belfast. That must have, you must have been so excited when you get the nod for that game to play in front because you've watched it against Sheffield, you've played on the road in TPS, and now you get to play at home. Well, yeah, I, now that it's uh, behind us, I can obvi obviously disclose that uh, Belfast was, uh, we were talking to Belfast as well before I signed with, um, with Nottingham. So, so I somehow chose uh, Nottingham over Belfast, and with only me and yeah, the coach of Belfast, knowing that, you know, it, it's, it, really, um, it really meant something. It really lit, lit a fire under me. And, yeah, they were, they were down some people that night, and that wasn't the, the real Belfast team, obviously. But we put up a, a pretty big win. And, um, yeah, that was, that was a cool debut to, to get, that's for sure. And how did you find the, the twist in focus? Because obviously the Elite League is different in the sense that the league championship is the main trophy over here. And everywhere else, it's the playoffs. How did you find that mindset? Because I know, like, I know, goalies going to every game to win, but is it is it different knowing that that's the there's more pressure to win every regular season game? Uh, I think like you're you're definitely right in what you're saying. It's different, but but that that was what was uh, intriguing. You know, like here you have a chance to to win a championship in a different way, and then win another trophy after the playoffs, a unique kind of playoffs. So it's a, it's a unique position you can put yourself in by signing with a team like Nottingham and the team we had that year, you know, obviously 
we should have won a trophy, at least one, you know, like we were, we were very disappointed in that. But I think more so, it wasn't so much the pressure before games. It was more the, the letdown uh, when you lost, like you felt like, okay, that was a big one to lose. And at the same time, when you won a big game against Sheffield, against Belfast, Cardiff, uh, actually, I don't know if we won against our Cardiff, but never mind. We won't talk about that. I think, we, I think we pretty much always beat them at home apart from one game. I think you're right. Yeah, that's right. At home, we're pretty good. But yeah, let's uh, forget about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but then the wins were so much sweeter as well, you know? So it's the highs and the lows. And in some way, they're higher and lower than in other teams, in other leagues, where you kind of quickly uh, wash it aside and it's, oh, that was just two or three points, whatever, move on. Um, so I think they should... I think it's unique and they should keep it uh, always, you know, it's, uh, it's unique. Um, and like, I think it's attractive to players for, for players to, to join a league that's uh, built that way. And then how did, how did, like you say, you come from a small country. How did you find the, the travel, you know, like saying, like playing in Nottingham on a Saturday, playing in Fife on a Sunday. How did you find that sort of thing? Um, Actually, I think our schedule worked pretty well. I, I, there were some Sundays where we had to get up in the morning and then go on a bus all day. But yeah, like I've been fortunate enough to be uh, <laughs> gone around Europe a bit and Sweden and Germany. They're pretty big countries as, as well. So, so the bus life uh, is something that, that I don't really have a big issue. Like, I kind of think it's one of the best parts about hockey. Uh, when you lose, it's, uh, it's not a good at atmosphere in the bus. But when you win, you have a lot of fun. And uh, some of the best memories of your career will always be from the bus. So I don't think, I don't look back on that as a, as a bad thing. Plus the scenery. Got to see the scenery up north uh, in Scotland. I, I, I enjoyed that very much, actually. Were there any away rinks that you liked going to? Because obviously every rink in the Elite League is so different. You'd like, you've got Nottingham that's, that's nice and big, and you've got like Coventry where it's a bit tighter and more hostile. Then you've got Fife where it's really hostile. That's a different kettle of fish up there. Manchester is its own, its own beast. Did you enjoy the different challenges each ring brought? Which ones were your favourites to go to? Yeah, that's a good question. Like my first road game, a road start, I think, was in uh, in Skydome. Um, I always remember that name because of the baseball stadium. <laughs> you know, and that's... You know, the rink itself is, is all right. You know, once you fill that up and there's a lot of Panther fans there. Um, we played the, the New Year's game up there as well. Um, and then the, the locker rooms are just so tiny and whoever built those are, are idiots. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. How can even 10-year-olds uh, get dressed in those locker rooms? But it, it kind of... But it just adds character to everything. Like, every league has those kind of rinks and arenas that are not very nice but you know like uh, so Coventry is one of them I like those but always it's always if there's wins attached then mm -hmm. then you obviously like those you know like Sheffield I got to give it to them that's a that's a very nice rink you know they have a good following there as well and because they have a bright orange color you know it just it just add, uh, adds to the atmosphere that it's is so well, how do you say, lit up in a way, you know? And then obviously we have a section where we walk in from behind a tunnel where all the Nottingham fans are. So it's cool that you kind of get a close interaction even uh, even though it's a big uh, big arena. So those two are probably the main ones, but playing at home will, will always be the best um, from the IHL. And is it those rivalry games against Sheffield that you, like, are they circled on the calendar a little bit more than the other games? I, I think so. I think it's um, I think it's a given. You know, it's um, it's what everybody talks about. And even if you're not engaged in it, even though you've never played a game against them, like as soon as you step onto the ice, you can feel that that the atmosphere is there. You know, and then there's a, the players. You know, the the Bedridge, the Lakovich, and and Farmer, and all those guys that that have played many of those games. And you can obviously tell, you can see it on their face, you can feel it on their body language that, that this is special. And that goes for the German league, the Swedish league, the Danish league. You can feel it in the room. And once you get onto the ice, that the players that know, they, they, they'll it'll rub, on, uh, rub off on you. So, um, so yeah, you don't have to circle it. You, you feel it right away.
And you mentioned the, the British guys then, the Robert Farmers, Oli Betridge, Rob Lakovic, Steve Lee, David Clark. They're obviously the core of a team in the UK. They're, they're the guys that are there for multiple, multiple years. Just how important are they to that locker room to help the imports settle as well? Oh, it's, it's everything. You know, like especially the way EIHL is built up with, with so many imports. Um, you know, the, the core guys, like it's obviously a privilege to have so many British guys on one team. Mm. I, what I can understand not that many teams have that, you know. So to have those guys and always to be able to lean on them when you come to a, like a new country, a new city, driving on the wrong side of the road, don't get me started on that. But, <laughs> but I, no, but it's, it's, it's a little thing, you know. Like I needed a, a toolkit uh, for my apartment. I have to set up uh, curtains. You know, and David Clark brought, brought it in the next day. Here we go. And, like, like, no worries. Like, you always have somebody to talk to about the, the small things, even just a lunch spot, um, and then talk about rivalry games like you just talked about now. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a huge part of, of what makes the, the culture in the room, you know, because every year imports come and go, but usually the local guys, they stay, and they're, they're the – I don't know what the word in English for it, but the culture bearers, uh, I think, uh, directly translated from Danish anyway. <laughs> and they, 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 they set the tone, you know, like they might not be the ones who get the most ice time, but they're definitely uh, some of the biggest pieces uh, of the puzzle. And then guys like David Clark and Corey Nielsen, they're obviously huge names in Panthers history, huge names in British hockey history. At what point do you realize like what their standing in the game is? You, you feel it right away. It's uh, it, it's pretty obvious who, I don't know what the right word, the big dog <laughs> or whoever, you know, like you, like Corey's status there is, is, is obvious right from the start. You know, you walk in, you see the pictures, he's in every championship picture along with Bucky. Uh, it's, and like, you don't need to look up on, on history. You just feel it. Like I said before, you, you feel it, you see the body language, you see the way other people respond to, to when they talk and the way they talk to them. Um, and that can be uh, foul mouth too, you know, like it can be some, some swear words, but, but that's in coming from a good place. And if you can have that kind of banter back and forth, that means there's mutual respect. And, and that respect is obviously uh Pretty, pretty big when we talk uh, Corey Nielsen and, and David Clark. And one of the things that if anyone's followed Nottingham for any length of time is December is a, 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 almost a swear word for Panthers fans because it's a horrible month to be a Panthers. And no one knows. Could you put a finger on why? Because obviously this, the December that year did go a bit south, to say, to say the least. Can you put a finger on what causes it? Because I remember from speaking to Jeff Brown, he's like, I can promise you we're trying. And if we could have figured it out, we would have. Yeah. Um, well, I was injured all of, uh, all of December. I don't think that, that wasn't my answer to it. But, I was, <laughs> uh, but so my perspective is totally different than uh, if you ask uh, Brownie, you know, he was in it and it's so frustrating. And, you know, like December is usually like a pretty, it's either or month because you're away from home. And, you know, the whole town is uh, lit up with lights and it's uh, Christmas time and you might have people coming in for Christmas, you might not. You have so many games that there's not really, you don't get days off in December. So the whole, it could be coincidences too, you know, it's not like we got uh, the shit kicked out of us all December. It was, it was all close. Exactly. And, and like when, when you're sitting in a press box, it's, it's more frustrating because you're not helping and at the same time you can't even you can't even be there emotionally with them because you don't have a say in it because mm. right? you're not the one going out there you're not the one facing all the criticism all of that so being on the outside is sometimes twice as hard but being like having to leave the ice uh, losing to Sheffield on Boxing Day or when it was, you know, like it's the worst feeling you can have because you know those are big games. Um, and, you know, like sad to say that that's, that's where we lost the championship. There's no doubt in that. Uh, we obviously still came back strong the last couple of months. But, yeah, that's where the, that's where the league championship uh, got away from us. Um, and, like I said, I, I, I feel bad for not having anything to say about it. But when you're out on the outside, there's just – you feel useless. 
then you get you got back in goal on New Year's Eve against Coventry. And I, I remember yes. that, that we, we, we just we we just come off that, that those games against where we didn't score for two games straight. Do you remember the relief in that building when Tim Billingsley scored that goal? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of Tim Billingsley highlights, that's for sure that season. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was just it was just cool, like cool to come back for one, and then uh, and also getting to play back to back against the same team. You know, we went there a couple of days later, right? Um, the next day, you can't enjoy also, New Year's. You you can't go out for New Year's. You have to get ready for a game the next day. Oh, well, I remember that pretty clearly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was the thirty first, and then the first, or was mm -hmm. the thirtieth? It was back to back. Yeah, yeah pe people love that. The, the players love that. Yeah. Yeah, like we like we we like that too because then you just like like nobody likes to practice or train. Like we just want to play games. So when it's back to back, that's that's fun. Uh, that you can't go out and have fun on New Year's. That's not so much fun. But our our team still had fun, uh, just not on New Year's Eve. Um, but you know that's that kind of got us over the hump and forgot about Christmas. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to build enough momentum to get all the way back. But that's, you know, when you have a team that never loses in Cardiff after New Year's, it's, it's hard to hard to get back from that. But uh, yeah, there's that relief is, is obviously great. And you always, you're always so happy for the guy that's that center of attention for that. And um, unfortunately it was Billy, but that's okay. Yeah, he loves it. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then while all this is going on, like in the background, you've got the Challenge Cup going on which is another unique thing about the elite. You've got a competition within a competition that's going off. How did you find that? How did you find like, the, the aggregate scoring of that? That's always something that... We, we used to have it in Denmark as well. Okay. Um, not the same. We, we would go um, Champions League style with uh, two games against one opponent, opponent aggregate. Um, we didn't have the, the round robin first. Mm. So I kind of knew about it. Um, but obviously it's... It's not the title people want. So at the end of the day, you know, like if you lose, you're not really that down. You're tr you obviously try to win. There's no doubt about that. But the, the losses aren't as bitter, so to say. Um, Makes but sense. yeah, yeah. So it's a different style. But I was I have been a I've been accustomed to it from from Denmark uh, in the past. Now, one of the next big things happens that Luke Pither joins the team. And he kind of provided a real, he's got that big smile on his face all the time and kind of has this amazing debut against Belfast where he scores two goals. What, what did he bring to that room at that time? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, I wouldn't call it strange. It was just like, he, he definitely fit in right away, you know, like, um, uh, it's, it, that's the tough part about the business is like, you got to see some people go and, uh, the people that had to go were still good people, still good, good hockey players. And, and every one of us knew that it wasn't that guy's fault. Uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, so when we bring in a new guy who already knows some of the guys, that he can kind of just like lean on them to start. And then once everybody gets to get accustomed to the new guy, then, you know, like uh, Luke Pither, you know, lit up the room and lit up uh, the scoreboard, like great hockey player. And uh, it was, that was a good acquisition for us. And, and like I said, he fit in great with the room. Like we had a really, really good locker room that year and to just come in and fit in right away, you know, like that's, uh, that was huge for us. And then you get two big bombshells now. And I cannot remember which way around these two things came. You had David Clark announces his retirement and it's announced that Corey Nielsen isn't going to be back in Nottingham the year after. And I imagine that must have a strange, that like, I've been at the I've been working out there a month when all that happened. So for me, it was like, Oh, wow. But for, for a player, I imagine that's different. When you find out the coach isn't coming back, does that how what does that do to a room? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it definitely it would be a big lie to say that it didn't affect the room. Mm. That's for sure. Like, like I said before, the two people that we just talked about, mm. you know, they're pillars in the organization and they're pillars in the locker room as well. Um, so David Clark retiring, you know, like. I think all of us players have been in situ situations like that before, playing with a veteran player that was about to retire. So, so obviously dealing with that is, is, is somewhat simple because uh, he's a peer of yours. So you speak on the same level and you, you can 
you can crack jokes about it, call them old, whatever. Um, but still, you still know that every day he comes to the rink, he's going to cherish every single day. Mm. So definitely don't be one of those guys that going to ruin that for him. Like some of us have uh, years left. He doesn't. So, so be there for, for, uh, for a soldier like that. And then with the coach, that's a different story because he's an authority. Mm. He's not something that somebody you talk to on an eye level, uh, same eye level. So it, I don't know, the shockwave was probably bigger than people want to admit it, but it definitely takes, I don't know, I don't want to say it takes away some respect from the players to the coach, but it definitely uh, diminishes his authority in a way, sort of. Um, can we can we blame the loss of a championship on that? No, I don't. I, I don't think so. But it definitely affected the team and the rest of the year in a slightly negative way. I, I think so. It's just one of those situations you never really have. Because it's true. So if not, if the coach is not coming back, they're just released at, the, at that point, and a new guy comes in. Whereas there, you're yeah. sitting around waiting, like, so who's because obviously you're at a certain point in a year, you start to think about the next year. who's making those decisions. I don't, do I want to play for? I can't impress this guy because he's not going to be here sort of thing and it's just a strange it's just an interesting thing to wonder about it's very interesting and it's very individual too you know like um, some guys probably thought about that a lot some guys that really wanted to stay there they did they must have thought about it I don't know but I would I would think so um, I definitely thought about it you know like at that point I thought I was I was going to do my best to stay but obviously it wasn't going to be with Corey. Um, so, so then different things come into play. Um, but then again, Corey's not the, Corey's not the type of coach that, um, that you, uh, you don't have to kiss his feet for his approval. Mm. In fact, I don't think it's a good idea to kiss his feet. <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember anybody from that group of guys uh, who did that. Um, and they, everybody probably knew that that wasn't going to improve your chances. But, you know, with some coaches, uh, that kind of stuff works, not with Corey. So, so either way, either way you felt about it, um, your, what do you call it? Your, um, your interactions with them should not have changed. Um, I don't think they did for anybody anyway. So. Well, that, that speaks to the, the respect he had in that room and the professionalism of the guys in that room that you wanted right. to send him and Clarkie off on a high. And I remember that being a big, big focal point of the run into the season to, to do it for those two guys to try and win a championship. Absolutely. Um, and like I said before with, with Clarkie, you know, he's, he's a leader, but he's also a peer. Um, and, and you definitely want to do it for the guy next to you. Like that's what you always want to do and you want to do it with them. And even if you're selfish about it and just want to win a championship for yourself, well, think about it 10 years from now and you, the day Clarky retired, you raise a trophy with him. You know, that's, that's something that's special. That's something many of us hockey players dream of. You know, like when you think of uh, the players that played with uh, Ray Bork when he finally won his Stanley Cup, you know, that's something they'll always remember. And uh, you can kind of relate it to a situation like that. And yeah, you want to win it with the guy next to you. And do you, I remember one of, the, one of the run-ins to that season was the, the, the final like, home regular season game we had was like a game against Fife. And we were sat around bigging this game up as Clarkie's last home game. And do you remember what he did at the morning skate to make sure he couldn't play in that game when he knocked himself out? Oh, <laughs> I remember because everybody thought I did it. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't touch him. I swear I did not touch him. He, he, I, he toe picked or hit the post in an awkward way and went head first into the boards and he was not okay. Mm. He was, uh, he, he hit the boards hard or the ice hard. I, 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 I think it was the boards he hit with head first. Um, and yeah, we were joking. He did it on purpose, but he, no, that was, that was a bad, bad scene. Um, but yeah, he, he still ended up, uh, finishing the season, which was, which was good. Uh, imagine having to go out like that. That wouldn't. That wouldn't have been. That wouldn't have been fair to to his legacy. Did people think you tripped him up then. Well, it was. I swear, I did not. 
<laughs> it, was just like, it was in so close and, and Clark is the fast skater, you know, and everything happens close and they thought that I put my stick out and maybe they were just like, I don't know, poking at me for make, trying to make me feel bad. Maybe they're just, I don't know, but I swear I did not touch him. <laughs> and then you getting ready then for this playoff weekend. And like you said, it's different. It's so different to everyone. What are you getting told about it before you go into that environment? Well, just that it's completely crazy. Um, but I, I got, before I even went to the, to the first game, I, I could see it because outside my window, I could look right down at, at Motorpoint. So I could see the, the square in front of Motorpoint just being full, full of people. So I knew that, okay, this is, um, this is going to be something else. And then I stepped into the building uh, with the game playing before me. I came same time as Lakovic, I think. And we just stood there and watched the game. And the atmosphere is just unbelievable. And, like, Nottingham wasn't even playing. And that's the first thing that struck me. It was like, we're not even playing. And it's a full house. And it's, yeah, it was, um, that's, uh, that's a top five hockey experience uh, of my career, that game against Sheffield. Unfortunately, it was a loss. So that it can't be top three because it was a loss. But. It was uh, it was crazy, and my, my dad was there for that weekend, and he's been he's been hyping it up uh, uh, for people here ever since. Like you need to go there, you need to go for, for that weekend, try and get tickets, and hopefully now that uh, that Nottingham fans and and Sunday Yuska fans have uh, joined forces, uh, perhaps they can they can meet at the legend next year and uh, get ready for for final four. Uh, before the final four, there was a pretty big game, a pretty fun game in Nottingham with uh, D- Danny Bangs, I believe, as you all call him. <laughs> oh yeah, I tell, remember me, that. tell me, tell me about that game because that was incredible. That was uh, that was well, it, well, the game started in Belfast, right? So because yeah. it was aggregate, and we did not do well in Belfast all season. And that, I don't think that was an exception either. I forget. What did we lose by one over there? By or one, two? yeah, because Clarkey scored late, didn't he, to bring it back to one. I think, one. I think you're right, yeah. And then we, we come home and everything, all the pressure is on us. And, you know, like at the end of the day, Belfast was probably the more skilled team than we were. Um, and, yeah, like, but we were, we were so jacked up for that game because it's, it's win or go home, you know, and – Obviously, it doesn't sound good uh, when you're a professional hockey player, but if you go home, there's no more paychecks. Mm. And so there's a championship to pay, pay for, but you everybody still has a mortgage or insurance and things that got to get paid. So you win, you also get paid. Um, it, it sounds horrible, and I feel bad for having to say that, but it's it's true, and everybody knows it. It doesn't matter if it's hockey or if it's if you're a carpenter, it doesn't matter. It's the, everybody needs to get paid. Mm. So to see that puck go in, you know, like it was, I'll just start out saying it's not about the money. That's for sure. But when, when, when he scored that goal, it's like, I screamed so loud that yeah, I, like I had a headache till the next day. Cause I screamed so loud and skating up the ice to meet him. I, it was, it was unbelievable, and it was a good hockey game to start. Like, it was a perfect finish to end, so, end somebody else's season and to extend our own. Like, it was just perfect. It's like, unfortunately, a week later, you know, like a different team did the same to us. Hmm. So that's, that's hockey for you. Um, but to have the, the high first and then the low after, uh, it just uh, sets a standard for what it's like to play uh, hockey at this level. And then I'm sure as a netminder, you could appreciate that save, like that save Jackson Whistle made down the other end. That's one of the most incredible things I think anyone's ever seen in that building. Yeah, it's, uh, he, he's uh, definitely, definitely a guy that can pull off those, those kind of saves, you know. And, and, and actually, when, when, uh, when Bang scored, it's Spang, sorry, not Bang's. <laughs> it's, you know, like for a second, you're not sure if it's in or not. Like I'm, I'm standing 60 meters away, you know, it's, is it in or did he come across and actually save that? Because that's what he did all the time. So yeah, thank God he didn't do it on that one. And then at that point in the year, you're playing with that, that beautiful bright yellow glove. Do you remember that luminous thing yeah. that you got given? <laughs> the yellow glove. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> that was bright. <laughs> it's bright. I still have it here. Um, I brought it home with me. Uh, 
It's better than the yeah. orange one. What's that? It's better than the orange one. Better than the orange one. I had some people tell me about it that that wasn't too good because the orange is uh, orange is not a good color for Nottingham. But yeah, when you that's the thing about coming in late to a team, you don't always get the get the equipment packages that the, the first guys get. Well, at least your helmet was budget, right. Yeah, your helmet was the right colors. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was lucky, but uh, wrong logo on it. But um, but yeah, that's how it goes sometimes, you know, like uh, you can't always uh, get it to fit and equipment's expensive too, so. <laughs> and speaking of equipment, I, I don't know why I do this every episode. I like to big Goody's ego up for some strange reason. Tell me about how important Adam Goodridge is to that locker room. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, like it's, he should have been in a conversation when we talked about uh, the coaching. Club, you know? It's because like the equipment guy is, he's part of the coaching staff and he's part of the group, you know, and he's got his own little thing. Yeah. And he's a therapist so, for the team. Yeah. He's, he's everything. And he's the guy you can come talk to. And he's the guy that, you know, helps you out when you need something, you know, and, and then Goody's personality is just perfect for that job because he wants to help everybody at the same time. He's not afraid to tell you, no, you cannot have a pair of skates. <laughs> Which is good, you know, like I've had, Guy said that I would say, yeah, yeah, you can have a pair. And then a month later, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not coming after all. Okay. But, you know, like his personality is so perfect for that, for that uh, job. And, and he does it so well that everybody is so, so comfortable around him. And that's, that's important for a hockey team that, that there are no, what do you say, interferences in the group's chemistry. <laughs> And it goes with the physiotherapist as well, you know, with Phil and uh, it's like, if, if, and Razor and all those guys, you know, like if they come in and they're not part of that same atmosphere, then the atmosphere kind of dies. And at least for the year I was there, you know, everything was perfect. Everybody was aligned. Everybody had fun on the same page. So, so definitely uh, all of those guys are important and, and goodies like the core of that. And after the game against Sheffield, it's obviously the game the day after, which no one really wants to play a part of. And are you, were you, were you given the chance to play in that game to like, you know, forget the one before? Did you, or were you just never going to play in that one? No, uh, I was just told uh, Garnett's playing um, um, and maybe gospel will, will, will get in there. You know, it's, it's still, you know, for, I, I don't want to call it professional because, it doesn't matter how professional you are. When you play a game like that, it doesn't matter when your season no one essentially... Wants to play it. Nobody wants to play it. Uh, I don't even think the referees, even though they're strange, I don't even think they want to be referees in that game. You know, and as a goalie, like, I felt bad for not, not even having to dress. You know, like, I wasn't even a part of it. I was up in the press box. You know, like, I felt like I was away from the group, and I felt bad about it. But at the same time... Of course, gospel should should be there in case he's going in and getting some getting some ice time. Um, but yeah, it's yeah nobody wants to play it. Uh, Clarky got the score. He uh, he got the salute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, he got the score, and and Fife's uh, goalie was actually pissed. That was kind of funny to watch. But uh, and he got. But at the same time, you know that was a good that was a good situation to give Clarky a an honest farewell, you know, if, if the season had ended the way it did the night before, you know, he would just have left the ice with his head down this way. He could leave the ice, you know, and get the, get the cheer to get the salute that he deserves. So something positive did uh, come out of a game like that, uh, seeing it from the outside, at least. On that Sunday as well, I think you sent a very uh, I'm going to call it a poignant tweet out the day, the day of the game. Like, you know, the sun still come up. Like, and that's an important... You remember the one I'm talking about? No, but not really. You put something out like, the sun's come up today, it's another day. It's a, I, okay. I, don't, I don't know what it exactly was, but that's the, it was kind of like the, the mindset a netminder has to have after a, bad, after a game like that, where you have to wow. forget about it and move on. Is that yeah, what yeah. About? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was just like... Uh, I, I don't do a lot of tweets, uh, and I, did, I don't think I did throughout the season either, but it's, it was just, about, just as much of a therapy for myself, I think, uh, to let something out. Um, 
uh, not so much to be heard. It was more, uh, more, uh, more of ther therapy. Uh, and the fact that I knew that I wasn't even going to go on the ice, you know, like, like you said before about getting back, mm. uh, I wasn't going to see the ice again for another four or five months, you know? So, so in that way, you know, like a tweet like that sometimes, you know, help yourself more than helps anybody else. <laughs> and the thing is, well, at the end of the day, yes, you are superheroes, but you're all people. Just a sec. It's because my girlfriend's coming home, so you might hear the dog, whatever. Oh, I've, you, locked you, my dog, I've, I've locked my dog <laughs> in another room. <laughs> okay. But he's probably going to get excited when she gets home now. But <laughs> If he does so, well, we'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> that's just yeah, she doesn't know I'm doing this, so maybe she would say something. I currently need an interview. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> what dog have you got? <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's a mutt, but uh, he, mostly a lab, black lab. Oh, okay, we've got two shits, so they're really yappy when they oh, get okay, okay. So they're barking all the time? Uh, any any time a car goes past, someone knocks on oh. the door. Mail, anything. It's just it's just two of them as well. So it's both. Oh, my God. oh he's very quiet. I've been lucky. So yeah. Yeah, I have to lock them in the other room when I do these kind of things. So, okay, okay. So that's how bad they get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not good for audio, no. <laughs> they, they happened when I had a uh, big urn on here. Okay. Because so I thought I'll try them out, and see how they are. And someone came by and they went mental. And Brian, I'm very sorry. This is big. But what I found out is that big, tough Brian McGrattan has smaller dogs than I do. So okay. <laughs> he's got like really tiny dogs. So I was like, oh, good. <laughs> I don't feel as worried now. <laughs> yeah. uh, shit is nice. I like shit. They, 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 they just sit and lie down and watch and stuff. But like I said, when they get going, they're very, they get going. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And like, let's see. But it's good yeah. to have dogs. Oh, they're the best. Yeah. Let's say you, you mentioned like say you, that was therapy for you sending that tweet sort of thing. But that, and that's the thing is it like you are superheroes to fans and to people who watch you, but at the end of the day, you're just people and you need that and you do need the same things that every other person needs. Yeah. Well that's yeah, and that's that's what laid the foundation for for sayings like that, you know, like you feel you feel absolutely horrible when you wake up after a loss like that. You know, like in the room after the game like that, you you just wanna you just wanna dig a hole and then jump into it and then wait wait there forever. You know, like um, especially as a goalie, you know, you definitely take a large part of the blame. You know, because obviously you can always do something else. You could always have raised your arm a little faster or you know read the situation differently. You know, like you you definitely take a large part of the blame and. And, you know, you, you got to get over that because um, there are more games to be played, uh, just not in that season, unfortunately. And then was there any ever chance that you were going to come back to Nottingham? Or was it always or was that opportunity at Sunday you could go play in your hometown with your brother again? Was that always always there as a character? No, absolutely. I was, uh, I was going to come back uh, if I was given the opportunity. But at the same time, you know, like things happen. And then my hometown team, you know, they, they were going to, build a new team and uh, they were going to have a new goalie for that new team and they wanted it to be me and you know it's it, it's hard to that's hard to turn down mm. like that was the first time in, in nine years that I actually had a conversation with with that team because they've always had a had a goalie going and they've always had a a, a mindset that I wasn't gonna come home um, and for the longest time I wasn't either but Sometimes it just uh, the stars are aligned in a certain way, and uh, like you said, I'm gonna play with my brother. I never play with my brother because he's five years younger than me, um, and you you won't play hockey forever. So say no to an opportunity like this, and and end up losing two, three years of a hockey career. You know you might not get the chance. So there's a lot of variables that uh, that went in there, and and I had to I had to make that decision uh, that way, and. And, and I have to say that I, I don't regret it either. Like, I'm happy to be a part of this organization. Like, um, it's a very, like mo most of you saw, it's a great atmosphere we have here. Um, very professional organization. And, and then to have these uh, days with my brother as well, you know, every day coming to the rink, we're colleagues, we're, 
we're building a totally different relationship than we had uh, three years ago. So uh, that's uh, that's obviously a big big part of life too. So so I'm happy with that. That that's that's awesome. Yeah. And the thing is that since you left the Elite League, you haven't been able to get rid of the Elite League because you run into Team GB at the World Championships as your first thing. <laughs> that must have been pretty cool to see those guys again, like Lacko and Oli and people. Uh, we were staying at the same hotel, so uh, we saw each other a lot. Uh, and 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 on top of that, to be there for the the ride they were they were on, you know, was was awesome. Because like obviously, I want to play every game, but in a way, I did not want to. I wanted to play against GB, but at the same time, I was relieved I didn't have to, mm. because like you didn't want to get in their way yourself. No, and at the same time, if they got in our way, mm. you know, that would be just as bitter. Yeah. So there was there was no win win in a game like that. You know, like uh, I know I was only in in the UK for a short period of time, but to to be in a country where hockey is not number one and hockey is a small, very small part of the sports game, uh, it isn't dark, but you. It kind of you get a lot of sympathy uh, with the people that are engaged in this community. So, in a game like that, there was no win-win. Like obviously, I was happy we won and we got to stay up. But at the same time, if it would have been the other way around, you know, like I would have been, yeah, very pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then, luckily, everything uh, everything turned out great, you know. And we were in the building. We had to play the game after uh, the UK, after uh, Team GB uh, won that game. So we were in that building when it happened. And we were, you know, like, it was just crazy. It was just crazy how it all unfolded. And the building was electric. Like, everybody obviously cheered for uh, for Team GB. So it was, it was very cool to see them there. That's, uh, that's for sure. And then the year after that, the Continental Cup comes around. And at what point did you start to realize, oh, we might be coming up against Nottingham here? Uh, I don't, I think, what's it? I don't think it was until they announced the tournament. Yeah, because it's not until the draw is done that you find out where you're Yeah, going yeah, right, right. So, you know the like, teams that are probably... in, you don't know when you, if you're going to fall into those brackets. Yeah. And then obviously they, we, we get Nottingham in, in the third game, you know. The game that's essentially either very important or very non-significant, mm. and for us it wasn't. Uh, we were already through, and then Nottingham were, uh, yeah, they were really hungry, and uh, I don't look back on that day as a very pleasant one. You know, I had to leave the game halfway through. Um, again, there we have one of those scenarios where it's it's bittersweet. You let um, the Pellini scored on you, so that's that's bad. <laughs> Well, a lot of guys scored on me, so <laughs> I forget if I had to leave after four, four one, I think, halfway through. Um, one of those situations where I'm not too happy with the coach. Like I don't care what the score is, just don't humiliate me and take me out of here. <laughs> you unfortunately got the the second round of that tournament taken away from you, didn't you? Because I imagine you were looking forward to get back in there against Nottingham to prove a oh, point. It was, uh... Well, uh, that that second round was like my goal that I, that I was gonna be ready for that. Um, but you know, like I had a torn uh, ligament in my uh, what's it? Sorry, the uh, did ACL or MCL? I always get them confused. <laughs> it was uh, the MCL. Sorry, uh, torn MCL. Um, I think it was a week after the first Continental Cup um, happened in practice. Um, yeah, and I was out for. For, for six weeks, and that was uh, first six weeks, and it ended up being eight weeks, actually. So, um, so yeah, that was a tough tournament to sit in the stands, for sure. Uh, not only do you want to play games like that, but you always want, you know, a revenge. Yeah. And, uh, and since Nottingham was already in the second game, you know, like, it can be like um, a liberating game because it's what sets you up for the, the final game, um, which it did for us. Um, oh, sun coming in. I was chucking it now with rain here. I'm glad you've got sunshine. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, when we, we were over there, when we were over there, it was grey the whole time. Oh yeah. It's uh, this time of year. I think we have the same climate usually. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It's tough to see um, 
in a tournament like that, you know, sitting on the outside. Um, and I knew I wasn't close to getting ready. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was too bad. But uh, it worked out great for us. And uh, I definitely uh, celebrated like I, like I played the games. So. <laughs> and, and plus, there's some great pictures of you in with the Panthers fans as well. Like you went around into the, into the crowd and stuff. And those pictures, it's just so great to see that you still have that connection with the Panthers. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Uh, I was going up to get hot dogs for the guys. Uh, <laughs> but the Panthers game was on, you know, so <laughs> I had to go through the Panther section. And obviously, I know uh, some of those people, you know, uh, Shelly from the from the legend and all. They, they definitely wanted me to come up. And it's, it's obviously a awkward situation because you, you're in your uh, – you're in your suit and tie and you want to be professional, but at the same time, <laughs> it's also great to see familiar faces and, uh, and happy people. How cool is it? I, I know there were talks that they wanted the second round in Nottingham, and, but it couldn't happen because of speed skating world championships, which I will say through very gritted teeth, because I'm sure that sold more than the Continental Cup ever would have. <laughs> How cool is it, though, to host that tournament in your hometown? Well, let's be honest, us players, when we hosted the first tournament, we did not want to be the host for the second one because, like, you're at home. Like, you're, you're here every day. You want to go out into the world. And, like, obviously, I talk up Nottingham a lot. So, like, uh, the guys from Nottingham told me already in the first tournament that it's not going to be in Nottingham for the second one for sure. So, I, we were kind of let down about that. So, we were hoping for Krakow. Uh, which didn't happen either. But, yeah, I definitely would have loved to come to Nottingham. And, you know, we would have a lot of fan support come to Nottingham as well. That's definitely for sure. So, hopefully, like, my career is not over yet. So, <laughs> hopefully we can still make it across uh, once this whole thing uh, dies down. I'm telling you, what, what needs to happen is a preseason weekend. Panthers versus Sunday Yuska in Nottingham. That's what it needs. Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> That's uh, that's definitely a plan that I support. And, uh, I let my GM know that it's it's a good setup and uh, you can live downtown and everything's good. Well, I, so. know, I, I know that that's something Gary wants to happen as well. When Gary wants something to happen, it usually does because he's very good at getting oh. what he wants. <laughs> you, you would definitely get some uh, some baby blue uh, fans in the in the seat, that's for sure. So, uh, so, so yeah, let's make that happen. And like, like I said, I'm sure there are Sunday Yuska fans that became Panthers fans because of that tournament. There are definitely Panthers fans that became Sunday Yuska fans. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. That's how I've just pronounced it. Fine. <laughs> have been it's fine. the other way around. And I, it's that connection that, 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 that that's what ice hockey brings, isn't it? Like, there's no animosity between fan bases. It's that you, you do develop that between fan bases because of experiences like the Continental Cup. Exactly. Uh, and that's, that's, like you said, that's the beauty of it. And the world championships are, are something I'm, I'm sure some of the people that went down to the world championships, they can come home and tell you the same thing. You know, that that's what unites uh, the hockey world because it's not, there's not that animosity. There's just like this shared, this shared connection, you know, and obviously there's a little bit of alcohol involved as well, but but, you know, it's, it's, it's a great time. And for those who didn't go down and see a GB play, you know, like, go, go next time. You know, it's, you, you have to go wherever it is. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a great experience. And, and uh, win or lose, you'll have fun uh, as a hockey fan down there. And I think it, it does speak to, like, I've always said that Nottingham fans have special relationships with netminders. They always have. They always, they always will do. I think it speaks to your, the, even though, like you said, you were here for a short time, you still built up a relationship with the fan base here, and you're that link between Nottingham and Sunday Yuska. And that's, that's a really cool thing for anyone who knows, like you and the two organizations. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's obviously great to, to be appreciated. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. And, and I appreciate the, the, what do you say, the love that you get, you know, like um, I definitely look back on those those days with, uh, with, with good memories and, and a lot of good people that I've met uh, outside the, the, the team as well. So I know that I definitely know some, a guy from Sunday, he borrowed my jersey uh, to go see Nottingham Panthers. Uh, I, don't, I, I, think, I think you played Dundee or something like that the last season. Um, he went over to see it and he said that was a, that was a wet weekend. <laughs> it could be any weekend over here. Yeah. <laughs> Imports don't come to England for the, for the weather. 
<laughs> Same with Denmark. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and then you're going to like this for a segue. Outside of ice hockey, you do have some other businessy type interests. So tell me about yeah. this paddle wedge that I found out about about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, free ads here. Uh, so, yeah, well, I two years ago, I developed a, a product for, uh, for ice hockey goalies uh, to protect themselves um, from, from pucks uh, essentially sliding up the stick and hitting the index finger, um, which uh, sounds a bit technical, but I think whoever is a goalie out there will understand what I mean when I say it. Um, like I, I, it didn't break my finger, but I had a bone bruise that, that was so severe that I couldn't, like, I couldn't close my hand. I couldn't hold on to my stick. I couldn't, uh, twist off, um, the, the top of a water bottle. It was, it was that severe, but it wasn't broken. So I couldn't really do anything about it. So I was off the ice for a week because it couldn't get hit anymore. So essentially I said, you know, fr frick that. I need to make something that so I don't get hit there. So at first it was like pretty much a big pillow I put on my blocker to add extra protection and it worked, but it's not as sustainable. So I just played around with it and eventually a product was created and uh, yeah, give me a second, I'll just go get it. Gotta love some free ads here. <laughs> I'm going to put, well, the, links, like I'm gonna put the links everywhere for you as well. Don't worry. Yeah, hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. So you put this, uh, you slide this thing onto your stick and uh, your blocker hand sits like this and then it sits up against your blocker hand so the index finger doesn't get hit from the puck that will come from here. Um, which is, and then like it wasn't meant to be a business or anything like that to begin with, but once I, once the design was there and, and you know, it worked, it actually worked. It wasn't just like a gimmick or something like that. Like I, I just reached out and I did, uh, did a survey and did my analysis and whatever I've learned uh, in school, <laughs> um, to see if there's a market for it. And, um, luckily there was. So, so now I got a little thing like that going on on the side and I'm definitely learning a lot about, uh, accounting and <laughs> and selling and retail and all that so uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and like, uh, and like i said from the instagram page of it you can see that they're actual like like you say it's not a gimmick they're actual proper goalies using this in other leagues that aren't just you <laughs> oh absolutely it's uh henrik lundquist uh former um new york rangers now oh, that's, that's still, that still breaks my heart why did you have yeah, to do that too. Too. <laughs> i'm uh I don't got anything against uh, the Capitals, but uh, I'm definitely on the on the blue shirt wagon as well. But uh, but yeah, I'm happy to see he he found a place and he didn't have to uh, retire. But yeah, he's definitely my number one poster boy. <laughs> uh, but I gotta give a big uh, shout out to Ben Bounds as well. He was the first first guy to use it besides myself and and another uh, couple of Danish goalies. And uh, he uh, shined a light on it to UK. So here's another uh, free ad for Puckstop UK, uh, who uh, were the first retailers to, to take it on. So there's a connection back to the back to the UK. You know, they were the first retailer to to get the product on board, um, which is really cool. So thanks to Ben Bounds for for reaching out to those guys who uh, who set us up. So yeah, it's it's a cool experience. And uh, as you can probably tell by the Instagram and Facebook page, uh, there's uh, it's not just me. There's uh, there are other goalies who, who believe that this uh, this actually works. Like I say, like I say, there's always a link back to the elite leagues, and it, to, put you on, to, to put you on the on the spot to to finish this off. If you had a, like I say, you're here a short time. If you had to give a a, a last message to the Panthers fans, what would it be? <laughs> yeah, that's putting me on the spot. Uh, I like doing it to everyone. It's not just you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. Well, I just, you know, in these uh, hard times, you know, uh, just uh, stay positive because there's going to be a, there's going to be a new day uh, on the other side of this. And uh, there's going to be ice hockey on the side of, on the other side of it too. So once that uh, opens up, hopefully uh, we can, uh, if not fill the rink, then at least uh, get a, get a few fans in there and get some ice hockey back at the motor point arena. So there's light at the end of the tunnel and uh, hopefully, uh, Hopefully we'll, we'll see each other there. And then the last note on this is always people have to end this with a laugh. That's my one rule. So if you look back at your time in Nottingham, it can be a moment from in a game, on the bus, in the locker room, something that people might not know that you look back on and makes you laugh. What would it be? 
Well, you don't have to name names. The people can remain anonymous. There's a lot of things that I cannot disclose, obviously. <laughs> there always uh, seems to be. I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, there's a lot of times, but something that always, you know, like makes me laugh is, uh, is, is Razor coming in, you know, letting us know there's seven minutes to go, you know, and there was this one time where we, where we all said, like every time he comes in and lets us know that there's seven minutes to go. Um, I don't know if you can set up if people don't know who Razor is, but uh, he comes in, let us know it's seven minutes to go. And we always, you know, give a big cheer and, uh, you know, gets the guys going. So he's, again, he's a big part of the team. So we just decided to, um, to not say anything. Like, like we don't give a crap. And, and it's hard to get 22 guys on the same page, but he came in and we said nothing. And he, okay, and then he just went out and we kept it for a good five seconds. And then when he left at the end of the hallway, then we just couldn't hold it anymore. And then we broke out and he was, yeah, he was saying some words back to us that weren't so nice. But, but you know, that's, that's team chemistry. And the guys beside the, the, the team roster are a big part of the team too. And that's, that's a fun memory. And I'm sure some other guys from that group will remember that one. I'm going to clip that out and send it to him as well. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you say hi. All right. Well, th thank you so, so much for your time today. This, is, this has been a blast. I've loved this. Yeah, me too. I've had a, I've had a good time and keep doing this because I watched some of the others and uh, it, it's fun and it definitely shows how uh, unique uh, the Panthers are and the whole, yeah, the whole thing around Nottingham. So keep, keep doing this. It's, it's a good, good, fun time. The Nottingham Building Society, along with our partners, providing you with all your financial needs, including savings, the lifetime ISA, mortgages, and home insurance. Visit thenottingham.com to find out more about how we can help.